If your team got guaranteed money, tell them call me. Whoop. Make me say ma, ma, ma. I done been around the world. Yeah, I was made for this. Player performance with J.A. Cavalier. Yeah, I was made for this. Welcome back to another episode of Player Performance. I am J.A. Cavalier, the most respected figure in sports gambling. We'll get into NFL preseason week three, all you need to know to beat the book. But first, let's recap preseason week two with Tessa Hall. Back it up. One more time. All right, let's see that again. Holy shit, the Patriots found their next Tom Brady. Mac Jones was incredible in a 35-0 win. The Bengals still suck. They took a loss to the Washington football team. Pat Mahomes took the field for the first time since the Super Bowl, and his team actually scored a touchdown this time in a win over Arizona. Mitch Trubisky looked like a Hall of Famer in his revenge game against the Bears. Zach Wilson impressed everyone, including Aaron Rodgers in a Jets win versus Green Bay. The Ravens are a preseason dynasty, picking up another win and staying perfect in their last 19 in preseason. To a uh, who? It didn't look like the Tonga Vailoa from last season as Miami crushed Atlanta. No starters? Big problem for Tampa, who got routed by Tennessee. No amount of coffee will make the Lions good, it seems. They lose for the second time this preseason. Minnesota may already have Mike Zimmer on the hot seat after another bad loss. Preseason really is fake because the Texans have two more wins than they'll have in the regular season. The Raiders gave everything to just escape past the Rams. The QB battle in Denver is the lead between Bridgewater and Locke, with no starter secured but two wins under their belt. The Browns meant business in Cleveland, taking down New York with no starters. Trey Lance could be the real deal after an impressive win over the Chargers. The Jags angered every better in America with a disgusting backdoor cover of the Jameis and the Saints. Actually, the Jaguars didn't anger every better in America. In fact, I could think of a couple thousand people who were thrilled with the outcome of that game. Every single one of my clients, I released an all-in max bet on the Jaguars. Now, Mike, I know you were on the opposite side of that game. We debated this. I said the five and a half was too fat. I told you this game would be won in the fourth quarter. Minshew and C.J. Beathard would be the difference. Minshew actually heard us throwing the interception into the end zone, um, but C.J. lit it up, giving us the cover in that game. My yeah. Well, you, you know, the anger, the anger was just explosive for me sitting at Barstool Sports in York and I've got 2,500 on the game and I'm sitting with my brother and he's got $25 on the Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> and, you know, me being the pompous ass that I can be at times, hard to believe, I, I, I'm fourth quarter i'm like i got this i got this i got this and then i said oh shit oh shit oh shit and he's starting to cheer and he's this. cheering <laughs> and the next thing you know i'm totally fucked and I, it was the worst loss ever because he was cheering for 25 dollars. i'm worried about clients and my 2500 it was absolutely the most insane thing ever well that's the worst feeling when you're sitting here with a game and you have five, ten, twenty thousand on a game. Not to mention all your clients, and you're watching a game with someone who's on the other side, and they're playing a game for peanuts, right? <laughs> they're playing a game for twenty, fifty, maybe a hundred dollars in a oh. game, and you're sitting there with literally six figures when you add up what you have on it and your clients have on it. Sometimes it reaches up to seven figures. Uh, that's the most frustrating and infuriating it's, thing. It's in insane. World. It's insane, and they don't even realize. I mean, the 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 little players are the guys that get they're the worst ever and you know that as well as i do you've seen them now, the now what mike means to say is we appreciate all the small no 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 people. i'm 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 only talking <laughs> about being in a sports book around them that have no idea what's going on but like mike was saying we appreciate all the small players as well i i love that i, I love the haters so, and the trolls so, okay. also so full transparency on this show, one in three last week free picks. Actually, that's only the second losing week I've had on this show. However, it does pay to pay a monster weekend for clients, three and one on Saturday, hitting our first 50 unit monster of the season, the J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Information broke Saturday morning. We absolutely unloaded on that game. 8-0 on NFL private plays dating back to last season. We followed that up on Monday night with the all-in max bet, Jacksonville Jaguars. That's profits of over 60 units this past weekend. Guys, let's double that this week. Mike, tell the listeners what we have going on here for them this week. We have a 500 Amazon uh, gift card giveaway. Uh, the rules are simple, guys. Guys, you just subscribe, you like, and you share this episode. Drop the following comment below. JA gives back. And there's only one entry per person. 
one lucky subscriber will win a $500 Amazon gift certificate or gift card. Excuse That's me. That's big. That's big. $500 hey, Amazon hey, Jay, gift Jay, card. Jay, you know, I subscribe to our show. Does that mean I could win? Absolutely not. <laughs> really? My birthday's coming up. <laughs> well, uh, early uh, happy birthday to you, buddy. Uh, all right. So if you're thinking of getting me a gift, I'm... I'm... Uh, actually, I wasn't. <laughs> okay. Fair <laughs> enough. All right. Also, guys, another special offer this week for our listeners. And I actually think this is much bigger than the gift card giveaway. This is the gift that keeps giving. One month, 31 days of NFL and college football for just $250. That's going to be elite service. So you get both NFL and college, which includes all the max bets, all the private plays. You get 31 days for the price of one private play. This offer is ridiculous. Don't miss out on this, guys. The link is going to be in the description below. And make sure you get in early. The sales department is going to be flooded. Jay's right. We've had a hell of a lot of rain in the Northeast this week. Well, that's not really what I meant, but did, do get in did, early. Did the you know there's a thing called flooded. catastrophic insurance protects you against natural disasters <laughs> that aren't covered by a standard insurance policy? <laughs> Try to regain that 2500 Exactly. Mike lost, so much, Mike lost so much on the Saints <laughs> that, that he has a side hustle going on now for a Hartford company. <laughs> um, listen, let's get back to the special. Offer. I'll tell you what, though, with what you have done on the Max and the private plays, it's a no-brainer. So guys, jump on it, jump on it, jump on it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Mike. All right, guys, we are locked, we are loaded, we are ready to roll. NFL preseason week three, Mike is always loaded. All right, <laughs> let's, break, let's break out the brooms this week. Big Mike, tee it up. Colts versus the Lions. Colts versus the Lions. Indianapolis is minus four, the total is 32 and a half. Jay, even if Wentz doesn't see action in this game, do you have more confidence in Indy? Well, I, I think it was good to see that Carson Wentz is back on the football field. Now, I don't expect him to get many reps in the preseason. Remember, Wentz is familiar with what the Colts want to do offensively. Frank Reich was his coach in Philly. So preseason isn't as important to him as it would be for a quarterback switching teams, learning an entirely new system, especially with his extensive injury history. I don't see him getting much run, if any. Uh, this game really should come down to Eason and Ellinger. Uh, the Colts are 2-0 and behind these guys so they kind of held down the fort so to speak maybe it's an experience thing but Eason is clearly the better quarterback of the two and what I like about Eason not only has he tossed for over 300 yards in two games but he's very accurate deliberate with the ball something you don't see in young quarterbacks I might actually lay the points here Colts defense has only allowed 28 points through two games. The Colts also travel well. 5-1 and one against the spread their last six as a road favorite. On the other side, it's really just been the Dan Campbell show, right? I mean, the guy is a psychopath, and we love him for it. However, his press conferences are, aren't going to help the Lions on the field. Is, is it? <laughs> listen, listen. Once you open a, a can of Campbell, it comes out thick, chunky, and you can't put it back in the tin because the seal is already broken, my friend friend yeah mike coming in hot with the fucking metaphors uh please stop <laughs> all right look <laughs> the first half of the steelers game was kind of a preview for things to come with detroit they may look better on on the offensive side of the ball when golf gets acclimated to the system but that's really not going to help that defense or the lack of, I should say. Roethlisberger or Rudolph, it really didn't matter. They combined to complete 71% of their passes. I, of course, released the Lions plus six and a half, my free pick game of the week. Now, we were lucky to cash that ticket as Detroit snuck in the back door, but you know my motto, Mike. Lucky or good, give me equal parts of both. I hear that, and I still am sulking over the Saints. But anyway, <laughs> Jay, what's your opinion on the total in this game? I like the over 32 and a half. Do you think I'm leaning the right way? Um, there was actually some early steam on the over, but reading into this line, it screams under, doesn't it? I mean, agree, 31 and a half is really tempting, and I don't see Detroit really moving the ball with any consistency. The Colts will also look to establish the run. I think this game is going to be played between the 20-yard lines. Stick to the Colts, pass on the total. Eagles at Jets. Eagles at the Jets. The Jets are minus four. The total is 33 and a half. Jay, do the Eagles actually have a problem? Uh, should they be worried heading into this regular season? You mean other than their fans? <laughs> oh, Jay going for the jugular. <laughs> no, look, 
All I'm saying is when you type Eagle fans into YouTube, <laughs> the top two search results you get are Eagle fans throw snowballs at Santa <laughs> and Eagle fans eating horse shit. <laughs> you look, you don't believe me, go look it up. Go right now. I'll, I'll actually wait. <laughs> all right, look, all jokes aside, I love Philly. I love the city. I love Eagle fans. Um, some of the best and certainly most loyal fans in the national football. Okay, okay. But, but, but should the team be worried heading into the regular season? I preseason is not the most reliable source when it comes to grading a team, right? But at the same time, Philly shouldn't really feel confident heading into the regular season. This team has been lit up by quarterbacks like Dwayne Haskins, Mason Rudolph, and now Mac Jones. Philly has allowed 59 points in two preseason games. Now they're facing a Jets team that actually just put up 23 against Green Bay. After Jalen Hurts, the Eagle quarterbacks are fucking atrocious. Joe Flacco and Nick Mullins combined for just over 100 yards. I don't trust Philly to figure their shit out anytime soon. So here I am. I'm probably committing a sin, but I'm leaning Jets, laying the points. I'll call this one New York 24 and Philly a very generous 17. <laughs> I'm going to go with you on this one. I'll take oh, the God. J-E-T-S <laughs> Jets and lay the four. Realistically, Jay, let me ask you this. How many games do you think the Jets are going to win this year? I'm going to say 6-11, and 11, but I actually think that they're going to be a competitive 6-11. and 11. Mm. Like, they, they play in a tough conference. Facing the Bills, Patriots, and Dolphins twice. Bills may be the best team in the AFC. Patriots will certainly be better. They had a lot of guys uh, opt out of the season last year. And Miami will. Do Miami's defense is legit and upgraded at the receiving core. So I, I'm going to say 6-11. and 11. Um, but, but like I said, I, I do think they're going to be competitive in most games this season. They, they may do pretty well uh, somewhere against the Patriots or, or the Dolphins. Somehow they always seem to play a close or a great game, like you said. They may not win it, but they'll be competitive. Uh, agreed. Uh, agreed. Vikings at the Chiefs. Vikings at the Chiefs. Kansas City is minus three and a half. The total is 35 and a half. Jay, is there any doubt in Kansas City here with them needing just to cover by just a little bit over a field goal? A uh, couple of alerts coming in early on the over in this one. For me, it's actually easy. It's either Kansas City or nothing. It might actually shock you, but Mike Zimmer has a lifetime preseason record of 20-7. and seven. And you would have never guessed it based on their performance. The Vikings have shown us nothing on offense, scoring a whopping total of 16 points. Two games combined, 16 points. Now, Minnesota's not really been giving their starters reps. I don't expect the narrative to change in this one. Also, Andy Reid believes in high snap counts for guys like Patrick Mahomes during the preseason. You've seen it last week. Mahomes stepped onto the football field for the first time since he got spanked by his daddy in Tampa. <laughs> I assume you're referring to Tom Brady. Well, you refer to him as Mr. Brady, Mike. Fair and enough. to get spanked by the GOAT in front of 96 million people is actually an honor. As Michael Jordan would say, it was personal. All right, so last week the Kansas City Chiefs handled their business against the Cardinals. I expect them to roll again in this one. Buy it down from three and a half to three. Take the Kansas City Chiefs, lay the three points. I agree with, with you on this one, Jay. I, I, I like Mahomes here if he's going to play the whole first half, and I think laying the three is a gift. We all know that the Chiefs will be the Chiefs this year. What do you think about the Minnesota Vikings overall for their season? I actually don't like this team's DNA. Uh, we talk about hot seats, right? But we don't hear enough about Zimmer and Cousins. Uh, to me, this kind of feels like the season for both. The issue is going to be for Minnesota that they're kind of stuck. I mean, they, it's it, the contract that they have on, on Cousins, all of that guaranteed money, it really does feel like the, the Vikings are handcuffed. But but what they're not stuck with, they're not stuck with Zimmer. And and the Cousins, that, that was one of the craziest contracts that I have ever seen. What was it, 94 or 97 million? And like you said, all guaranteed. Guaranteed. Now, taking nothing away from Cousins, good for you. Go get the money. There's facts. Cardinals at the Saints. Cardinals at the Saints. New Orleans is minus three and a half. The total is 34 and a half. Jay, do you trust the Saints here knowing that they are trying to find their quarterback entering the final game? Well, I don't really believe that they're trying to find their quarterback. Listen, I'm not a real big fan of what the Saints are doing. Actually, should I say what Sean Payton is doing? After what we watched on Monday night, no one believes that there's really a quarterback going, uh, battle going on, do they? I mean, I think it's actually insulting. I I'm not insulted. I, I really could care less. I mean, Taysom Hill actually should be insulted. See, I agree 
naming Winston as the starting quarterback. Taysom Hill probably being used as a Swiss Army knife of sorts is probably what's best for your football team. It probably puts the Saints in the best position of winning long term. I do. I believe that. But don't act as though QB1 is wide open. Don't act as though the job is there to be won. Then give Winston all the reps with the ones. The deck is stacked against Hill. I just think he deserves better. The guy has literally gone out there and done everything that's been asked of him. And not only has he done everything that's been asked of him, he's excelled at it all. What do you think Drew Brees thinks about all this? I think Drew Brees is laying out in the sun with his feet up in a hammock, eating some uh, po' boy right now. (laughs) So so you think he's coming back? Not with that NBC analyst money. I mean, for the show, though, I'll take the Cardinals plus the three and a half. I do like New Orleans in this one. I'll lay the three and a half. I had that bad beat on Monday, but I'll come back for more. Mike, what's the definition of insanity? Me. (laughs) Bucks at the Texans. Bucks at the Texans. Tampa Bay is minus four. The total is 36 and a half. Do you fade or ride with Tampa after they have looked brutally bad in their first two games? I actually love this game. I love Tampa in this game. Now, I don't put a lot of weight on the preseason. I don't think anyone's questioning who the Buccaneers are going to become. Um, With no starters last week, we really couldn't expect too much from Tampa. But in this one, I expect the uh, the Brady Bunch to go hard early, see some first quarter action, get a couple drives in before pulling the starters. And I think that's all we're going to need. I think that's going to be enough. Listen, you want to build a little bit of momentum going into the season. And is there really a better spot? Spot. Is there really a better team to be going against? If you want a punching bag in the NFL, you want to see the Houston Texans across the sideline, right? <laughs> Defensively, the Texans are going to struggle mightily all season long. Do you know something we don't know? Well, I know many things you don't know. <laughs> okay. I mean, but this really is a spot play for me. This is actually the perfect spot play. Take the Tampa Bay Buccaneers later. I floor. thought we were totally open and honest with each other. Well, what are we fucking married? <laughs> Look, I, I never put a ring on that figure. If our relationship goes uh, sour, you're not getting my Bentley. You're not getting my boat. I get full custody of the baby. The baby, of course, being the player performance podcast. I have absolutely no opinion on this one. Let me ask you this. Do you think that Tom Brady can lead the Tampa Bay Buccaneers back to the Super Bowl, or is he finally over the hill? Well, look, one of two things are going to happen. It's either going to be C or foot and mouth disease. All we've heard all off season from Tampa, and this is literally all we've heard from Tampa, is we've heard how good he looks, how mobile he is, um, and how good he feels. So they did put the talent around him. They re-signed everything they needed to re-sign. I don't know who's going to challenge them in the NFC. I don't know if they can actually win back-to-back. I certainly think that they have the inside track to represent the NFC here. Rams at the Broncos. Rams at the Broncos. Denver is minus 8.5. The total is 33.5. Jay, the Broncos have put up at least 30 points in both games. Is the over a good look in this game? Now, I'm not going to touch the 8.5. I do, however, think the 33 and a half is incredibly soft. Denver has won both of their games by at least 27 points. No official uh, starter has been named by uh, Vic Fangio. That means the battle uh, between uh, Locke and Bridgewater continues, and the points could as well. The total has been set here at 33 and a half, while the Denver's de- uh, Denver defense has allowed just nine total points. The offense has combined for 63 points in the preseason. They've nearly hit this number by themselves in both games. I assume the total was set due to the status of Stafford. Stafford hit his thumb in practice, which uh, should keep him out of this game. It was that bad? Well, with how things are going now in the NFL these days, they may put the thumb through uh, concussion protocol. Still, (laughs) I, I, I think that Bryce Perkins can do just enough to help push this game over the total. The way Denver is playing may not take all that much from the Rams. Lock and Bridgewater missed on just four passes last week. The running game has been electric. Brandon uh, McManus is hitting field goals from all over the field. This total is too low not to take a bite at. Give me the over 33 and a half. I'll call this the Denver Broncos 27, Rams 17. I'm with you on this one again. I'll take the over 33 and a half in this game. Do you think Sean McVay will get the Rams team back on course? And do you think Stafford is the answer? Now, I like Stafford. 
I'm very seldom do you see a trade where you can say both teams actually won, right? Sure. I think the Lions, who are a team that's looking to rebuild, got young talent, a young talented quarterback who knows what it takes to win. The Rams, who were a piece or two away, feel like they actually got that piece. The Rams probably um, the most interesting team to watch this season. The question now is, can Staff- Stafford stay healthy? Remember, he has a history of injury. I actually like this trade better for the Detroit Lions than I do for the Rams. Now, listen, he's played in Detroit with talent around him in years past. Maybe not more recently, but in years past, he's had enough talent around him and still hasn't been able to produce or he's been hit by the injury bug. So I think the Detroit Lions getting younger at that position with a quarterback with experience of winning is actually a a, a home run for Detroit. I agree with you there, and and it is a question of if Stafford can stay healthy. That's the bottom line. Chargers at the Seahawks. Chargers at the Seahawks. Seahawks are minus six. The total is 35 and a half. Jay, is this too many points for the Hawks to lay or are you looking at an entirely different number? I actually don't understand this line. The Seahawks have looked brutal. They've lost two games by a combined score of 50 to 10. Seahawks laying seven here is baffling. And I'm also not comfortable taking the charges. Not with what I saw from Stick and Daniel last week against the Niners. Justin Herbert's not going to touch turf in this game. Brandon Staley doesn't really seem all that concerned with preseason. And rightfully so. Mike, I hate to be that guy. I know you're big on overs. But the under is now 23-8-1 in the preseason. I actually expect that trend to continue. The Seahawks might throw Wilson out for a few drives. But still, this is an offense averaging 5 points per game. They also struggled mightily down the stretch of the season last year. The Chargers haven't scored more than 10 points per game. And their defense has actually played well, allowing just 28 points through two games. So I'm going to go with a very soft lean on under the posted total here. And Jay, I'm going to take the Seahawks here minus the six just because I think it's a ridiculous line and they have only scored 10 points in the preseason. What's your opinion of Russell Wilson? Do you think he's slowed down a little bit or do you think he'll have a little magical season? Well, I don't understand how he's going to have a magical season. I mean, where have the upgrades been made? I don't know that there was much of an upgrade on on the Seahawks part from last year at all. And the end of the season was fucking miserable. He was uh, taking sacks at at an all-time high more than any other quarterback in the league. And newsflash, Russell, uh, it wasn't all the O-line. He was actually holding the ball too long, making really bad decisions down the stretch. And I'm not really a big fan of this Seahawks team. Don't forget, the West has gotten really tough this season. Already considered the best conference in, in the NFL, it's gotten even tougher. Arizona, huge, huge, huge upgrades. The Niners are now healthy. Uh, they don't. The biggest problem for the Niners now is they don't have one quarterback, they have two, right? Um, and also, don't forget, the Rams, the Rams. Now, we don't really know what Stafford's going to be or become in the McVay system. They don't know if they guys have their guy or not, but you do expect the Rams to be better as well. So with the upgrade of the Rams, the upgrade of the Cardinals and the 49ers back in healthy, I actually see a little bit of, or my prediction here is going to be a little cellar dwelling for the Seahawks. I, I, I actually think that I actually think the talent surrounding them in that conference has, has surpassed them. I, I think it's going to be fun to watch the West this year. The West will for damn sure be the best conference in the NFL. Jacksonville at the Cowboys. Jacksonville at the Cowboys. Jacksonville is minus three. The total is 36 and a half. Do you really trust either team here? Mike, there are a lot of rumors swirling around Dallas. Dak Prescott may not be ready for the regular season. The Cowboys may be really in in some trouble here. Uh, Sending guys out like Ben DiNucci and Cooper Rush is an issue. Now, I did, of course, hit with the max bet on the Jaguars Monday night, but that was more of a spot play. That was more playing into a number. Five and a half was it was really fat. Now, I did expect more from, from Minshew in that game. We ended up getting it late from C.J. Beathard instead. It's not about the ones in preseason, right? I mean, very rarely do QB1 contribute to the cover in preseason. It's all about capping the twos and threes. And though I do like the Jaguars' depth at the, at the position more, in no world would I be comfortable laying three on the road with Jacksonville. Listen, Trevor Lawrence has looked average at best. 
Urban Meyer's offense is both boring and predictable. Cowboys are still a shit show under Mike McCarthy. The only side I can see myself leaning at all is under the posted total. Considering both offenses have struggled, the Cowboys quarterback situation is out of control. The under is 4-1 in games played this preseason involving these two teams. Not ready to lock this one in just yet, but I will lean under the posted total for the show. Again, this is a crazy line. I'm going to take Jacksonville Jaguars minus the three. They need this game because it's going to be a long season. Now, (laughs) speaking of a long season, Urban Myers and Trevor Lawrence are not used to losing. This is really going to be a test for these two. Do you agree or disagree with that statement? Now, the NFL has a way of humbling young players and young coaches, although Urban Meyer is really not young, but new coaches will say, in a hurry. Everyone talks about it. When it comes to Trevor Lawrence, that's all you hear is he has it. The kid has it. I don't know what the fuck it is. I certainly have not seen it, it to this point. <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, actually, actually, I can argue of the five top, of the top five quarterbacks taken. Am I really wrong to say that Trevor Lawrence has looked the worst? He has looked the worst, and I don't know what finding it is either. Well, at some point during the course of the season, I'm waiting for the aha moment. Aha, (laughs) that's it. Ah, it. I'm waiting. I am am waiting to see it. Now, I did say, and I actually, you and I had discussed this in length. I did say that I thought Justin Fields was the best quarterback in this draft. I still stand by that. I know you were a little excited to see him get lit up in in the game last week. Immediately, I saw that text. Oh, maybe that's why he should shut up. (laughs) (laughs) So true. Raiders at the 49ers. Raiders at the 49ers. San Francisco is minus three and a half. The total is 35 and a half. Jay, you obviously lean towards the quarterback battles covering the spread. Is this another case in this game? No. I'm actually going to take the Raiders and the points. Gruden wins preseason games. They, that may not actually cross over into the regular season. However, he's 38 and 18 in the preseason in preseason games all time. He's actually eight and two since rejoining the Raiders. We talk a, a lot about quarterback battles. Denver, New Orleans, Chicago. The 49ers don't have a battle going on. Jimmy G is going to start. Now, he will probably play five or six games, get hurt, and Trey Lance will step in. Uh, Trey Lance may be their future, but this is anything but a quarterback battle. Also, Nathan Peterman has looked like a star the last two preseasons. I've stressed it's not about QB1, right? It's more about the guys after. You're going to see Carr. You're going to see Mariota in this game. The second half, a heavy uh, dosage of Nathan Peterman. That's where this game is going to be won and covered. Nathan Peterman. Going against guys who are going to be flipping burgers in two weeks. (laughs) Both of these defenses have looked okay so far through two games. Nothing special. Also, Trey Lance hasn't looked really all that good. Early in the first half against the Chargers, he threw one and what should have been three interceptions. He didn't start moving the ball until late, going against the Chargers threes. I think this is going to be a competitive game. Give me the Raiders plus the points. The the best part, though, with the quarterbacks in Vegas, if they don't make it, they always can flip burgers at In-N-Out Burger. That's a great joint. (laughs) Now, listen, I'll be honest with you. I have zero interest in this game. But I want to ask you, do you think Chucky can lead the Raiders to a halfway decent season and earn his $10 million? Now, no, but I think that has less to do with Chucky and more to do with Carr. Now, we do talk about all the young talent that's coming into the NFL, and we talk about guys in a hot seat, and and I don't think you can mention hot seats without mentioning Derek Carr. Fair enough. Patriots at the Giants. Patriots at the Giants. New England's minus three. The total is 35 and a half. Does Daniel Jones getting action deter you from this line? I would legitimately take Mac Jones over Daniel Jones right this second. So no, I have no concern over Jones starting this game whatsoever, especially considering that he at some point he's going to hand it off to Mike Glennon. The Patriots defense just blanked the Eagles, allowed 13 points during the entire preseason. Mac Jones has looked excellent, and even Brian, Brian Hoyer isn't a bad second option. If And that's if Newton doesn't play, which is actually likely. Uh, regardless, the Patriots are 8-2 last two preseasons. Certain coaches approach preseason business as usual. And look, let's, let's face it, 
Belichick doesn't strike us as a guy who's comfortable losing a fucking game of cornhole. So I, I expect the Patriots to extend the streak to 9-2. and two. Patriots 24, New York football Giants 17. I don't have any opinion on this game. Jay, do you think Belichick is having second and third thoughts of uh, not having Tom Brady? That's actually a great question, and oddly enough, the answer is no. The Patriots were not a playoff caliber team last year, and I don't really care who was at the helm. They're not a Super Bowl roster right now, even if TB12 was under center. So that's actually a divorce that worked out for both parties. I mean, is it better to hold on to glory days, or is it better to just cut ties and start over? Yes, Tom won a Super Bowl with Tampa, but he wouldn't have won in New England. Tom may have won that Super Bowl, but the Patriots gained a future. But let me ask you, how long in the future are you looking into, though? I mean, are you saying three, four years? But the jury's out. But like like we discussed on last week's episode, you know, teams have won with less, right? I mean, a really good defense, a really solid running game, you know, controlling the clock does win games, does win championships. Correct. Baltimore Ravens, Trent Dilfer. Perfect. Exactly. So if you have a game manager in Mac Jones... And you have a guy who does what, what the Patriots want him to do. Throw screens, be, be um, accurate with short passes. You know what? They can build on the future. And this, is, this has been the Belichick way. Okay, so let's see Mac Jones play. Well, we're going to have to see. Listen, I actually think that the Patriots right now are probably better with Cam Newton. I like the dual threat of Cam Newton. And he didn't play bad coming into that situation last year. But don't forget, the Patriots had so many guys opt out of the season last last year. We don't really know what the Patriots could have been. And they didn't miss the playoffs by all that much. So true. So true. I agree with you there. Guys, remember, be sure to subscribe, like, and share. Drop the comment below. J.A. gives back. One of our listeners will win a $500 Amazon gift card. No idea who it'll be, but it certainly won't be Big Mike. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> just to recap, my best bet for the show this week is Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, the fade material is Big Mike back on the New Orleans Saints. <laughs> well, I got to come back with them. And, you know, old habits, they die hard. Or is that just an old dog new tricks thing? All right, listen, guys. Also, be sure to grab that special offer, 31 days NFL and college football, just $250. Link in the description below includes all max bets and private plays in both college and pro and, uh, football for 31 days. That is an exclusive offer for our listeners only. And those who can't afford the 250 listen, respect. Listeners made a ton just tailing this show last season. Don't worry, we got you. All right, that's our show for this week. For Tessa Hall, Big Mike from the group home, I am J.A. Cavalier. Back here next week as we tee it up for NFL Week 1. Until then, remember, bet with your head, not above it. Day, week, month, and season packages available on whylose.com. That's the letter Y, L-O-S-E.com.